Greetings, I'm Sarandeep Puja from the Division of Orthodontics at the University of Kentucky. The research that I'm going to share with you was conducted at the Ohio State University. Based upon published survival rates, a practitioner may have to tell their patients that one in five or one in four mini screws may fail. While primary stability is generally associated with increased success, it is possible that factors that increase primary stability may also increase the amount of bone damage associated with mini screw implant insertion. So the objective of the study was to quantify the amount of bone damage associated with the insertion of two types of mini screw implants, a self-drilling and a non-drilling in bone of different monocortical thicknesses. Bone within the first half millimeter of the implant interface was defined as the adjacent region and bone 0.5 to 1 millimeter from the implant interface was defined as a distant region. Using a Merck's grid, the percent of the two types of damage were quantified. Significance was set at T less than 0 0.05. We found that the bone thickness in the mandible was approximately 2 millimeters and was twofold greater than the maxilla. The means in the standard deviations of the total damage area, microcrack area, and diffuse damage area are presented in a tabular form in this slide. Just to orient you, the first column lists the device type and location, and columns 2 through 4 list the micro damage variables of interest. On the top half, the data from the maxilla is presented, and on the bottom half contains the data from the mandible. Just to give you a few examples, the red boxes depict the total damage, which is the sum of the microcrack and the diffuse damage in the maxillary adjacent regions. In the green boxes, data from the mandibular distant region is presented. In all specimens, the amount of damage decreased as the distance from the implant bone interface increased. In the maxillary specimens, there were no statistically significant differences in any of the damage parameters between the mini screw implant types. In contrast, in the distant region of the mandible, the self drilling mini screw implants had significantly greater microcracked areas and greater damage areas than the non drilling mini screw implants. We only quantified the bone damage in non vital tissue. Previous recommendations for pilot hole placement have been based on monocortical thickness. Perforation or creating a dimple in the cortical plate has been advocated by practitioners when they anticipate increased thickness of cortical bone. If the goal is to limit the amount of micro damage accumulation, non-drilling mini screw implants may be used where the monocortical plate thickness often exceeds 2 millimeters such as that is frequently encountered in the mandible. In contrast, the choice of a self-drilling or a non-drilling mini screw implant in the maxilla or in bone of approximately one millimeter thickness will be determined by factors other than bone damage. Thank you.